Hello, Hello and, and welcome, welcome to, to Homestead, Homestead Metabolism. Metabolism, an exhibition as it existed in the spring of 2019 at Real Art Ways in so-called Hartford, Connecticut. Everything in this installation came directly from my great auntie Mary Furlong's homestead in the so-called Braintree on the occupied lands of the Massachusetts nation. And I'll give you a brief tour of the exhibition, which roughly mirrors her house. Um, I mean, the clothesline wouldn't be inside, of course, but uh, everything in the exhibition is more or less where it would have been in her house. So as you can see, this is kind of like the kitchen area with the table we would always sit and have our coffee at, coffee maker, fridge, and all different mementos and items, objects, and layers of meaning and stories embedded in each of these little assemblages. Um, Right now, we're kind of looking at the outdoor area surrounded by the classic picket fence, which kind of represents the pale from ancient Ireland. Here's a little statue of St. Francis of Assisi underneath the pink row light. And over here, a lot of the tools that my great grandparents actually used to settle the land, um, clear the, the trees and, and plant the garden, which is um, really at the heart of the settler colonial project, this idea of being a planter, a colonist, a settler, all interchangeable words. Um, right here is a coil of telephone wire which goes up and over the top of the clothesline and goes up to the top of the exhibition where it is tied to the uh, maypole, which is also a pike reproduction. I'll get to that one in a little later. But you can see that same telephone line from the outdoor area comes down now over to this side of the exhibition where it's been used to string up with the clothespins all these checks that Auntie Sister used to write me for the caregiving, which I've started to turn into an alternative care-backed investment note called Care Shares. Um, so you can see this is kind of the living room area, but on the other side it's kind of Auntie's room with her bed and the crib that her great-grandfather my great-grandfather made for her in uh, Newfoundland. And uh, as you can see, it was the Mayflower Bedding Company. So this idea of the pilgrim settler colonial origin myth being everywhere in the household, even if you're not really seeing it right away. In the back there, you can see two Waterford crystal lamps, a very classic Irish-American decorative. And um, here in the middle, of the homestead is the hearth as it was in ancient times it is so to today and on top of the hearth you kind of have the mythological mantelpiece um, which represents you know the kind of values and the history of the people living there you can see the canonical knowledge embedded in these harvard classic texts you can see some revolutionary war scenes Washington, the slave-owning genocidal mania crossing the Delaware. Um, there are different pieces of her oil furnace that have been replaced over time, which I've turned into candle holders. And, uh, you know, just JFK busts, classic. Here's a plate with a Norman castle on it. Our family actually came over with the Normans originally to Ireland. Um, a Plymouth Rock plate. Mickey the Minuteman plate from the Bicentenary celebration. And in the middle, again, we have the myth of the pilgrims and what they represent as far as this uh, taking over of indigenous land. And of course, the other side of that is represented by these two empty uh, moccasins. Well, they're representations of moccasins, but, you know, of course, none of this land would have been available for settlers to take had it not been for the genocide of indigenous peoples across Turtle Island. So that's kind of what that represents. And then the bricks from this, um, from this hearth are actually left over from the chimney when they were building the chimney. And the soil, the clay soil that these are made of actually comes from the Titicate Reservation of the Mattachesa tribe of the Massachusetts nation. Um, and in between all the bricks are actually my auntie's old utility bills that I used to help her pay. Uh, you know, everything from light, gas, electric, telephone, everything that keeps the modern homestead running, um, if you have the capital, that is, to pay for them. Um, and then right on the other side of the living room is a model of her heating system, which is sitting in this serving table, which my great-grandparents bought in Butte, Montana, before they moved to um, so-called Braintree, 
um, on the kind of bottom floor, you can see the interior of the house, the domestic situation with a little pond I built in the backyard, actually. Um, and then in the middle, the chimney, which kind of connects the everyday to this kind of infrastructural level, um, which is represented by these red lines here, which are the heating system in the house. And then the blueprint of the house itself is actually constructed with her utility bills that I collaged together with some of her old checks. Um, again, getting back to that idea of exchange through capital to uh, sustain the everyday. Um, and then right next to it, like I said earlier, is the 1798 pike reproduction, which our ancestors used to fight the British um, back in the late 18th century. And Auntie and I used this pole as a maypole for two consecutive Beltanes, an ancient Irish holy day. And we wrapped the pole itself with all the telephone wires from her house. Um, the pike's head was made by myself and Fanine Liam Christie in Ireland, a traditional blacksmith there. And I've impaled the pike into a cedar column that I carved and painted white as kind of a metaphor of empire itself. So I guess kind of sticking the spiritual weapon into the heart of the empire.